If the M3 is GSP, George St. Pierre, this is Colin McGregor. If you were trying to run from the police, they would just track you by sound, like from space. They would just call the International Space Station and be like, hey, do you hear that? And like, yeah. I'm like, uh, do you know which direction he's going? Just let us know. Hey folks, today's video is sponsored by eTags.com, a vehicle titling and registration company entirely existing online. Notice I mentioned vehicles, not just cars, because if it's got an engine and you got to register it, they got you. It could be passenger cars, pickups, RVs, EVs, motorcycles, trailers, even boats. If it's got an engine, you are good. If it's got wheels, eTags can register it. Or if it's got props, right? They can register it. They can transfer it. They can renew it. eTags can do it all. It's all online and with more than 375,000 five-star reviews to show up on Google, eTags is the jam. You can use eTags.com on your computer. You can use it on your tablet. You can use it on your phone. There's no more DMV, no appointments, no waiting in line, no indignities of getting there and waiting for the whole thing and then finding out you need one more piece of paperwork. Oh, it stinks when your registration is about to expire. Etags.com. You got to transfer it. Etags.com. They do it all. With Etags.com, you can sign at home digitally, upload documents from your device, and communicate with a dedicated registration and title specialist, either by phone, email, or text messaging. Etags has been changing the way that drivers register and title their vehicles. For over seven years, they've refined the formula, and it is smooth, it's easy, and it is excellent. They cover a whole bunch of states. Go to etags.com right now to see if they cover your states, and they can do specialty plates, out-of-state plates, title replacements, you name it. If it's involved, if it's the kind of thing that you would do at the DMV to register or title a vehicle, Etags has got it. So hit the link in the video description or go to etags.com slash the smoking tire for an automatic discount of $5 off renewals and $10 off of titles. And thanks to etags for sponsoring today's video. Morning everyone and welcome to the very, 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 very noisy. <laughs> Mercedes C63 AMG 507 edition. Yes, that is what this is. And today we're going to answer a number of questions. One, what is the 507 edition? How did it differ from the regular AMG of the time? Two, how did it stack up to the competition of the time from BMW, Audi, and Lexus? And three, how much would it cost you to get a used one right now? And should you over something like the regular AMG C63 or the one with the development package or something else? Now, while BMW was just starting the run of the F80 M3 at the time, this was the last year of the C63 AMG, the W204 chassis, I should say. The 6.2 liter was getting phased out. Turbochargers were on the horizon, the 5.5 liter and then the 4.0. Um, so they needed something to bring people into the dealership. They needed uh, to entice people to buy what was considered kind of an old car. So they made this, 507. So what does it have? Well, it has 507 horsepower. Um, that's where the name comes from. Very clever. The engine is a 6.2 liter V8. It is the famous M156 engine that we love because it sounds amazing. Sounds amazing. Yes, it says 63 on the back. That is an homage to uh, the M100 engine that Mercedes used in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Uh, but this is a 6.2 liter engine. Naturally aspirated. Love it. Loud as all hell as you will find out. So how does it make 507 horsepower if the base car only made 450? Well, it's kind of weird, actually. Um, this has the forged pistons, crank, and rod uh, rods from the SLS supercar. But you could also get those in the regular C63 if you ticked a box for the P31 development package. That only had 480 horsepower, but the only difference between this engine and that engine is a different tune. There's no real hardware differences there. What the 507 came with are these multicolor leather seats. You got 19 inch wheels that were special, an aluminum hood with vents in it that was handed down directly from the C63 Black Series, and that's it. It was a $10,000 option package. It was basically a little bit of appearance and a little bit of a power bump. 
Other hardware of note, it's got six piston front brakes, four piston rear. It's supposed to be carbon composite, but the owner told me that these seem to be replaced with steel rotors. They, and I agree, they do not look like carbon composite from the outside. Um, if you guys know something that I don't, let me know in the comments. Zero to 60, 4.1 seconds, quarter mile in 12.2, according to Motor Trend when they tested it. That is a tenth ahead of the far more powerful but far, far heavier CTSV wagon at the time. That thing was making 556 horsepower, but it weighed 4,500 pounds. But this thing is no featherweight. This is a 3,900 pound sedan, and the sedan, from what I read, actually weighs 45 pounds less than the coupe. So more doors, less weight. But I love it. I love the way the sedan looks. Okay, the numbers are important. The history is important. But what is most important about these is listening to this engine and driving the car, of course. Just listen, just for a second. I'm gonna have to turn the audio down. It, it sounds like Harley's having a gunfight. I mean, what what a sound. Oh man, I can't wait. Okay, 500 naturally aspirated Mercedes horsepower from zero miles per hour. One of the greatest events a person can experience. Uh, this does have fortune coilovers, um, so it's sitting a little bit lower than stock. The owner took it to the track recently, which I'm impressed by. Good for you. This transmission is not optimal for track use. This is a seven-speed automatic. Mercedes used it for a long time, and I think it hamstringed so many great cars. So many otherwise great cars were cut short because of this transmission. But the fact the owner tracks it, props to him. One of the most unique engine notes of all time, and truly one of the greatest. I mean, I've been around plenty of hot rods in my life, lots of LS engines, you know, the 4.2 Audi's a great sounding engine. Somehow, th somehow this 6.2 from Mercedes sounds unlike any other one. Okay, there's a little, little burble tune in it. Well, all right, that kind of uh, reveals my hand. So this car actually has long tube headers on it and an aftermarket tune from Eurocharge. So according to the owner, it's making 600 horsepower at the crank, roughly. Um, it's never been dyno tested, but that's what the word on the street is. Stock exhaust, stock cats, stock resonators, stock mufflers. But you know, when you shove long tubes uh, ahead of those things, uh, it tends to make a little bit more noise. I don't even care how this car turns or stops. All I want to do is hear it. All right. Well, that sound will probably indicate how lazy the transmission is. That was a very gentle transition. Um, it was almost like there were 14 gears in between third and fourth, and it went ah, and just like shift, 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 shift. It is a, a gentle ease into the next gear, you know, like getting into a pool. Let's put it, we're gonna go to sport mode now, see if there's any difference there. See if we tighten up the shifts. Steering, hydraulic, light, honest, Decent amount of feedback, not a huge amount of information from the front wheels, but some of that might be due to the tire width. These came with pretty narrow tires on the front. They're still pretty narrow. All right, pretty crispy downshift. Pretty crispy downshift when the computer has control under braking. Not too aggressive. Handles nice and flat. Coilovers seem to be doing a good job. I thought this car was going to be way too low. When it showed up, it was like, the thing's sitting pretty low. But, you know, and, and by being too low, this car had a reputation for being really, really stiff. Um, I have not driven a stock 507 edition, so I can't confirm that. That's what I read in reviews. But I would say this one, other than being 
half an inch, quarter of an inch too low. Um, soaking up these little undulations pretty well. This road is smooth, but it's not perfect. This is like if they put fondant on top of a bumpy cake. You know, like the surface looks nice, but we're still going up and down mid-corner. And it's doing a pretty good job at it. One thing these cars suffered from, and it, it actually really hurt how they stood against the competition, is tire size. Um, Motor Trend compared this to an RS5. They took it to Laguna Seca back in the day. Randy Popes drove it. And the RS5 uh, was quicker by half a second. Half a second around Laguna, substantial but not huge. But the RS5 had 275 square stance with P0s. It had stickier tires and way more rubber in the front and a little bit more in the rear, I believe. The C63 was staggered stance. So if you put more rubber in the front, I think it would have made up a good amount of that time because this is still making 57 more horsepower than that RS5. Seats hold me in great. You got these adjusters right here. They adjust lumbar and the side bolsters. Uh, they are really well shaped. I like everything about this seat, except for this weird crossover, scratching my armpit, you know, trying to get some side boob action in a movie theater control. That's a really weird pl uh, place to put that. I love these gauges. I love the analog gauges, the chrome bezel around it, bezel. I just, I like the way they look. I know they're using a lot of Mercedes and it works well. The visibility is nice. The car is small. This thing is the size of a Honda Civic from back in the day. And yet, you know, 507 V8 horsepower. Here we go. I mean, it's fast. It's fast. They ran zero to 60 at about 4.1 back in the day. This is a little bit quicker than stock. It's so bad. And it's incredible that AMG Mercedes has been able to keep a lot of that attitude with the new four liter twin turbos. I mean, considering the size of the displacement and the fact that there are turbos muffling the sound a little bit, they've done a good job. Like, you know, when you hear a, an F type R or, um, you know, the, like the SVRs, any of those cars, when you hear those barks and those burbles and just like that anger, that was inspired by Mercedes. That was 100% inspired by the number of reviews that praised this sound. And there were many, 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 many. All right, so let's talk about the competition at the time. The F80 M3 was just coming out as this was getting, uh, you know, kind of its last dance. New M3, inline six, turbocharged, 425 horsepower, weighed about 3,400 pounds, which is 500 pounds less than this car. That is significant. That is why the M3 felt quicker, more focused, and was quicker around a track. That is a huge amount of weight. You know, power deficit notwithstanding, who cares? Braking, turning, all of that is gonna be better than this car. RCF, good engine. That's what I'll say about that car, good engine. Um, but like the C63, not as focused when it came to performance driving and track driving as the M3. And frankly, I think this is a beautiful car. The RCF, great engine, great engine. Audi, gorgeous car, the RS5, gorgeous car. It, it doesn't have a sense of play to it. You know, it is, it is an excellent vehicle. And if you want to drive around in comfort all seasons and have a really good performance GT car, that is an excellent, excellent car. For me, when I saw and heard this car for the first time, I fell in love with it. Uh, you know, I grew up around hot rods and muscle cars and stuff, and this just has this attitude. It has this defiant, like, brash attitude that I think is so cool and so exciting. And it's a small car with a big engine. It, it's kind of like a French Bulldog that actually has the bite and bark of a Rottweiler. I, I just, th I've always thought there's something really fun about that from seeing the first T bucket that had a supercharged big block in it to stuff like this, where it's, you know, big engine, small package. I'm about it. I mean, even, even now up here, I can feel that handling is not what they focused on with this car. They did what they could, but for, for example, the differential, 
This car came standard with an open differential. The LSD was an option, even with the 507 package, which I think is so silly. If you're gonna do one last hurrah and give it you know, the most power you can and you know the hood from the Black Series, why not give it the LSD also? The Black Series only made three more horsepower. It had different suspension, of course. It had the flared rear fenders, which look amazing and obviously meant more traction, but it cost twice as much as this car. It's a lot. You couldn't just give this thing an LSD? I mean, $5,000 option, sure, it's optional, but it's very, very rare to find that. All right. The weird thing about this car, and Mercedes in general, is a car called the C63 AMG with the development package. Um, other markets, they called it the performance package, whatever, but basically, that was this car with just, like, without the seats and uh, with a different hood. It was, they took the base C63 AMG, then they took the forged pistons, connecting rods, and crank from the SLS. They gave it 480 horsepower. You could get the diff if you wanted to. It came with the better carbon composite brakes, six piston front, four rear. It came with all the hardware this has, unless you count the hood. And the rumor in the forums, and granted, I, I cannot confirm this. I don't have a dyno. Please don't get mad at me, Mercedes. What people think in the forum community is that this car and the performance package, or sorry, development package car, have the exact same engine and the same horsepower. They just say that they have a different number. So if you own a development, uh, a car with a development package and you've dynoed it, tell us what it says, because I would like to know and see if that's true. Should you buy one? Well, if you're into cartoons, yes. Um, pricing is like low 40s to low 50s, depending on what market you're in. But the real question is, should you get a 507 versus any of the other versions? Um, I don't think you need to. I think the, even if you get the base car, which has an open diff and plenty of power, it's going to give you the same sensations that this one will. It won't be exclusive. Like This is like one of 90 sedans that was brought into uh, the United States. But if you don't care about that, if you're here for the, the sensation and the emotion of driving this thing, then you should just get any C63 AMG you can because I do not think you will regret it. Sure, the transmission is a little bit too slow. Um, you know, yeah, the ride might be a little bit stiff. You can fix that with the aftermarket. But this is, this has the same kind of emotion as the CTSV. That car came out around the same time that this one was sort of fading and it had 550 horsepower. It weighed a ton, but we love that car because it's basically one of these with a manual. You know, that's what that is. So if you don't want to shift yourself and you want a very comfortable, very thirsty, very loud sedan, I mean, this will always have a soft spot in my heart. So thank you to uh, Nguyen for letting me drive this car, um, for bringing it out. This thing was so cool and it is such an honor and a treat to spend time in one of these cars because man, that's 6'2". That 6.2 is as special as everybody says it is, and just as loud. So, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for listening to the podcast, and we will see you next time. And remember, always fight your tickets. Use code TST10 on the Off the Record app available in the Android and iOS store, or go to offtherecord.com TST.